Hey, what's up guys? I was walking back from the squadron after doing a little bit of work today. I am not on the flying schedule today, so I don't have a sortie scheduled to fly, but I did have some work to accomplish that still needed to get done for mission planning purposes, and I will probably fly tonight actually. And I wanted to take a minute to stop and try to shoot an intro for this video. I shot some footage earlier while I was walking to work, but I think that it was too dark to pick anything up. And maybe if any of that footage was usable, I will upload and use that, and this will be part of another discussion. So if you saw the intro video, you heard me talking about how my focus is fitness within a constrained environment. Here in a deployed location, things are a little bit different than they might normally be. I do have a little bit more time to focus on some different goals in the gym, some gym experimentation, if you will. And so today I will be working out and I'm gonna talk about one of the things that I'm doing here in my home away from home to uh, maximize my time in the gym. So I will play the footage of what I'm doing in the gym and do a voiceover, but as a description before I go in there. In this environment, I'm focused partially on powerlifting and building strength, but also a strong hypertrophy focus more related to my appearance. And that's what I've been working on lately. So today, from the powerlifting standpoint, it will be bench press. And then from the hypertrophy focus, it will be arms. I am not that strong, admittedly, on the bench press. I haven't worked it for a long time. My background, which I will probably talk about in another video, comes a little bit from, or a lot from, in recent years, CrossFit. And for that reason, the bench press has not been a focus of mine until recently. Here in this home away from home, I can afford to focus on both the strength approach and also the hypertrophy approach to my, my lifting. The two are obviously very integrally related, and you're gonna see what I'm using to grow both of those facets. Even those efforts in the gym that are less related to the strength portion and more of the aesthetic or hypertrophy focus are still contributing to my strength, which is an integral part of my performance in the aircraft. I think it would be impossible to design a workout that doesn't tap into that muscle size and muscle development as you're trying to develop strength. So as I'm executing this program in the deployed environment, I'm marrying the two and using all those benefits. I have eaten today, so I will go into this workout with food on my stomach. That's not always true. I plan on doing a nutrition video to talk about how I structure my eating. I do sometimes utilize intermittent fasting, especially when I am operating in a calorie deficit, which I will do from time to time and I'm actually doing right now. I hope to do plenty of nutrition focused videos and just explore nutrition science in general and how to apply it for peak performance. But also I very much love food and I am very interested in nutrition science as it relates to both fuel and fun and I wouldn't have the Fighter Pilot Fitness channel without exploring the food and nutrition science side of things and I think it's important to do so. So without further ado, I will go back and change and then I am going to take my pre-workout stuff and get on to the gym, hitting the bench press from a powerlifting approach and then working arms and I will showcase those workouts when we get there. With the bench press, I am working up to the heaviest set of three reps that I can accomplish while still using good form, good technique from a strength gains mindset as opposed to a size development mindset. I do expect that as I seek out increases in strength, I will see increases in size or vice versa. However, there are small things that I am doing differently in my focus in order to support the strength goal, namely a lower rep scheme focused more on increasing the weight that I'm putting up from week to week as opposed to a volume focus which might drive greater hypertrophy over time. I do alternate rep schemes from week to week so after accomplishing this heavy three I will take a diminished weight from that and the following week I will accomplish five sets of five reps at that diminished weight alternating back and forth between a heavy three and a five by five 
week to week until I am capable of attempting a new personal best and continue to up the numbers across the heavy three and the five by five. Not only did I warm up with the bench, but prior to that, I accomplished some jump rope and some push-ups and some air squats. And while I don't think those particular exercises have any specific benefit to the bench press, I think that the warm-up in general is critical to any exercises that I'm going to attempt, and it's important that any warm-up is rigorous enough to prime your muscles and your central nervous system for execution of what you're going to do during that day. There's a link in the description to an excellent video on bench press technique by a gentleman far more qualified to give such advice than myself by the name of Jeff Nippard, and he details all the ways in which you can ensure that your bench press is meeting perfect form standards and perfect technique standards so that you get the maximum results while also protecting your body across the board. After I've completed the bench press, I move on to the hypertrophy focus lifts, starting with the bicep curl. I do give myself adequate time to recover. The power lifting in particular can be somewhat exhausting, and I want to make sure that I'm adequately recovered before commencing the rest of the lifts for the day. I'll accomplish three sets of bicep curls with a reverse pyramid rep scheme. I'll target eight reps and then 10 reps and then 12 reps, stepping down the weight each time. I've got links in the description to articles on potential benefits for reverse pyramid training. A good summary is that reverse pyramid training has shown some benefits specifically for complex movements. In terms of isolation movements, there is evidence to suggest that there is minimal difference in utilizing a reverse pyramid rep scheme versus a more traditional straight set, and I personally find that the reverse pyramid scheme seems to suit my progress, especially in the calorie deficit in which I'm operating. The most important principle remains control of the variables that best suit your goals, namely the volume that you're putting up over time and applying progressive overload to whatever rep scheme you are attempting to implement. And because the reverse pyramid scheme doesn't detract from capitalizing on progressive overload or volume and may support greater volume in some trainees, there is evidence to suggest that it can be as effective as other rep schemes. I will attempt to maintain perfect form and continue to keep the biceps isolated. As I get more tired, I notice my tendency is to rock the upper body, which is something I commonly Combat as I get more fatigued. Moving on to the tricep overhead extension with a dumbbell. I'm again trying not to rock, which can be a tendency as I get more exhausted, but would obviously detract from the isolation of the triceps. I'm still implementing a reverse pyramid scheme, targeting 8, 10, and 12 reps with decreasing weight across each set, but week to week. I will still work progressive overload either by building the volume to reach that 8, 10, and 12 reps if I've been unable to in previous weeks at the same weight, or once I've reached that scheme with good form and good technique, upping the weight across the sets. Specifically of note, in a calorie deficit, if you have to pick one or the other to sacrifice in terms of volume or weight, I have a link to an article down in the description by Lyle McDonald, who highlights that in order to preserve strength and preserve muscle, you can afford to drop the volume of the sets that you're executing by up to two thirds, meaning only doing one third of the number of reps that you were accomplishing, but it is critical to maintain the same intensity, which in this case denotes the same weight that a trainee might have been putting up before a calorie deficit. For the seated bicep curl, I find that seated with this inclined position and my back against the bench, I'm able to successfully or more successfully isolate the biceps for the lift. I'll have links down in the description to some studies about the differences in grip, but you'll see from the studies that I link below, there are minimal differences in terms of supporting hypertrophy goals across the various grips that you might apply for this exercise. I'm using the same rep scheme as I've already detailed for the previous two lifts, and after I've accomplished the three sets of the bicep curl, I will move on to overhead cable extensions for the triceps. 
for the overhead tricep cable extensions. I will take the time to get set with a stable platform with tension on the cable, which can be a bit of a challenge. I find that committing to the lift and committing to the starting position is a significant portion of the battle. So relatively aggressively, I pull against the equipment to set myself up with a stable base before commencing the lift. I'm using the same reverse pyramid scheme that I've been using for the other lifts, applying the same principles that I already discussed. It's important to note across all these lifts that technique is a critical focus regardless of size versus strength goals. And particularly for the cable extensions, I'm focusing on allowing the cable to pull my arms back past a 90 degree bend of the elbow in the hopes of maximizing the range of motion for the triceps. For this quick neck series that I do, I'm going to link to another video by Jeff Nippard in the description talking about focusing on the various muscles in the neck and how to specifically train them. I find that using a towel or a rag or something in between the weight and my head helps prevent the normal discomfort that you might feel from placing weights on your forehead or the side of your head. In my community, neck issues abound because of the nature of specifically what you might call dogfighting in the aircraft. The neck gets a lot of stress trying to look behind you under excessive G-load, especially while wearing the helmet or other equipment that I'm often wearing in the jet. And for that reason, I think neck work is critical and building strong neck muscles is paramount, specifically in the fighter pilot community for longevity longevity of the neck and for helping to prevent injury that might be detrimental to performance in the cockpit. Finally, I'll do some weighted leg raises for abdominal work. Far and away, it seems that the most important aspect of developing the aesthetic of the abs is diet, meaning if you are wanting a six pack or wanting visible abs, diet is the most important factor in revealing the abs, but working that muscle group as you would other muscles for size and strength certainly supports those goals. And if a diet reveals the abs, but there isn't much in that area to reveal, it's certainly worth targeting that area with exercises to continue to grow those muscles as you would other muscles. I still attempt a reverse pyramid scheme for this exercise, and again, that scheme has been shown to be particularly effective in the compound lifts or strength gains, but still effective provided the variables of volume and progressive overload are maintained, so I still apply it across plenty of the isolation lifts. And then once I complete this ab work, I'm done with the workout. All right, guys, that was the chest and arm focused workout, the powerlifting bench press and hypertrophy focused arm lifting day. I am now about to go eat. And like I said earlier, I plan on doing a nutrition focused video, but I wanted to first get through this series of videos talking about the actual workout split that I have been implementing since the squadron deployed. I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to your questions and comments below. Or as always, you can send an email to fighterpilotfitness at gmail.com or over on the Facebook page. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.